Day by day, we experience an ever-changing phenomenon called life. Every decision we make, along with every living being on this planet, dictates our story. Some bad, some good, but regardless, this makes up who we are as people. The one thing that remains constant is the present. So how will you continue to write your story? Learn from me as I learn from you and take the experiences around us to live your best life. How did your path mold you into the person you are today? My name is Matthew Ray. This is my partner, Chase Crane. And we made this documentary to showcase different people's stories leading them to present day. We present to you the path of life. I'm a professor of creative technologies at Illinois State University, and uh, I have a background in computer science and new media. I've been in a uh, I've been in an indie rock band since the 1980s. So uh, we toured the United States and Europe, uh, put out 13 albums, some of which were on a major label, a lot of which were on independent labels. <laughs> Lots of more very groovy stuff coming up on MTV's 120 Minutes. Videos from Jane's Addiction, Nirvana, and a brand new one from Alison Moyet. We're coming at you from the CMJ Music Marathon. We're hanging out here in the CBGB's Pizza Parlor with Poster Children. You guys are playing CB's next door. Uh, is it fun playing like a legendary place like CB's? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's wonderful. And the people who work here are really nice. Um, the United States and Europe uh, put out 13 albums some of which were on a major label, a lot of which were on independent labels. So yeah, I spent a good part of the 1990s touring, but also because of having a technology background, computer science background. Hi, I'm Rose Marshak. I'm currently the director of the Creative Technologies Program here at Illinois State University. I've been here for about 15 years, and I'm a professor in the School of Music, which to me is amazing because my background is computer science and uh, narrative media. Currently happy right now. Oh my God! Yeah, <laughs> I can't believe how happy I am. When I was when I was in college, though, I wasn't. I was very sad. I remember, um, and and even before that, I remember thinking. I, I remember like the sort of expectation that anybody who was smart was going to be sad. You know, oh, I'm sad. I I have the weight of the world. I have all this knowledge, and I'm really depressed because of it. And I remember that, and actually. Um, I think it was Rick Valentin that pulled me out of this. I think he taught me um, that, you know, either you're not, you're not smart enough to be sad all the time. It wasn't that. It was more like, like you, can, you can be happy. So, like you, you have a choice, you know. Rose said that you're the one who started it all, so. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> but it it gradually fell into place. Uh, I um, I trained in as an instrumental music education, instrumental music band director, oh. and I'm a woodwind player, clarinet, saxophone, some bassoon, that sort of thing. And then my first job was during the Vietnam War. I taught for the University of Guam in the Marianas Islands. And uh, I started a, uh, first started a wind ensemble there, and then an orchestra. And I directed some choral groups, a lot of mixture of military personnel, as well as um, Students there from all over the Trust Territory in the in the South Pacific. But I got interested in research, uh, in music abilities, music cognition. So I was offered a uh, a National Endowment Fellowship at the University of Washington in Seattle wow. to to uh, major in. Uh, music psychology. I came to ISU in 2003, and I 
previously had studied at a few different universities for a bachelor's, master's, and doctorate. And I was typically studying music, electronic music, um, and also computer programming to a degree. And I found the program here really attractive because it it was it was kind of slightly undefined so it allowed a lot of freedom to ex to be exploratory and to to basically do the kind of work that I wanted to do and teach the things I wanted to teach um, without being in a really you know strict and, and strict and rigid program how did my hometown perfect my personal growth? Affect. Oh, affect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like I didn't know my personal growth was perfected. <laughs> um, so I grew up in Fresno, California, um, and I I don't I actually don't know how it affected my personal growth. I I didn't know anything else at the time, so it just it was all I knew and. Um, I had the fortune of, of being able to go out of state um, to Utah and New Hampshire and then eventually to Japan to study. And so I think, I think a lot of my growth actually happened after I left Fresno, California. currently teach here in the Creative Technologies Department. This is my fifth year. Um, about my education, the brief background would be I have a bachelor's degree in audio design and production from Columbia College Chicago and a master's of fine arts from the Art Institute of Chicago in sound art and sound design. That's more of my academic background. And then outside of school professionally, I own and record um, at my recording studio, DZ Records, been doing that for 12 years. Work with bands from all over the world, um, international and national artists. Um, it's uh, it's been an interesting journey, and been fortunate enough to to make a lot of friends out of it, a lot of connections and colleagues. I think up to date, roughly around um, 1,600 videos for the live sessions I do at the studio. So around 640 podcast episodes at the studio. Um, around 80 different albums at the studio and a handful of uh, uh, um, like commercials and and animations and films like little tiny things um, within the studio but the main focus has been recording records and EPs and then doing the live sessions and then adjacent to that uh, is the music festival DZ Fest that I've been doing also for about 10 years so this will be the 11th year coming up and that started off this one stage seven bands, didn't really know anybody or anything in 2012, and it grew to two days, two stages, 40 bands, 40 artists selling artwork, 50 volunteers, local restaurants and coffee shops selling food and art, um, Red Bull uh, being one of the sponsors and dropping off a bunch of drinks for everyone, and kind of bringing the whole community together and spanning a whole nother type of music scene within the Chicago music and DIY art scene. And uh, everything I just said, trying to grow it and keep it going and then apply those those findings and learnings in that world to what I do here. So a lot of my method of, of teaching and, and bringing knowledge to students is kind of through what I've seen done in the music industry and in the DIY music industry specifically because although the high-end uh, professional music scene seems ideal, it's not very realistic. Most people actually start from the ground up and do it so in their neighborhoods and their communities. So helping students learn how to collaborate, work together, and navigate the world of um, the music scene is kind of where my forte is. I try to, try to evoke that across the spectrum of my, my students. So what is that you're most comfortable sharing with? What is your most impactful memory regarding character development? Ooh, uh, I'll, get, I'll, get, I'll get dark. Probably, my, I had a, a really serious brain surgery when I was nine months old. So growing up with the notion that uh, death is always right there, I could, you could, I could have just been dead. I also, I also could have had problems uh, due to the surgery. So the fact that I turned out normal uh, is a good thing, and it made me realize how delicate 
human existence is. So it allowed for me to always kind of get over that hump of my mortality that a lot of people face their whole life. I faced it when I was like five, when I realized, like when I watched the home videos of the surgery, I was like, oh, like we could just, you could just die at any second. Like there's no rhyme or reason to anything. We hope you enjoyed listening to the paths these people have experienced within their lifetime. Everyone has their own mountain to climb, but we can all learn easier and more enjoyable ways to continue our trek when we indulge in other people's journeys. We have a story to tell. What's yours?